nothing. Oh, LP did not get touched. Thank you, thank you, Konami gods. Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MST.TV. I did a reaction earlier about the ban list, but it was crap, so we're just gonna cut that right out. Instead, we're jumping straight into the juicy bits, which would be the damage report. You get things that you really care about, which combos are still viable, which decks are no longer good, and which are potential decks that are top tier or potential high tier decks that will get even better as time progresses. So that's what we're going into. Starting off into this ban list, of course, we have a bunch of banned tuners. Steam the Cloak, Glow Bulb, and Distrudo, three of which are the most reusable tuners in the game, if you summon any of these out through Needle Fiber, it's very likely that you're going to be able to spam it back out onto the field. And it seems like Konami's like, nope, we're not gonna deal with it in TCG. They've just gutted it out completely. Does that mean that the Needle Fiber is not as good? Well, obviously it's not as good as it can be, but I still think Needle Fiber is still a very powerful card. You still go into Desert Locust. There's still other variations of cards that you can still use uh, to deal uh, significant damage to your opponent with that. And you still get a free summon of another card uh, when you do use it. So I think it's still playable. Uh, in terms of Steam the Cloak and Glow Bulb, that's only affecting cards coming out now. It does make it so that uh, Naturia Beast is a little harder to summon and we don't get a bit of uh, spamage coming from Steam the Cloak. As for Distrudo, that hurts some of the Guard Dragon based decks because Distrudo is one of their combo extenders and that's going to be gone as well. Lunalite Tiger and Spiral Master Plan both have been banned. It seems like because Lunalite Tiger was not once per turn enough, seems like you guys have used it one too many times to the point that they're just gonna ban it straight up. That completely cripples out Luna Lights. As for Master Plan, hitting this one is a kind of an interesting choice. Nishi was gonna put it on his balance prediction, so congratulations, Nishi. You knew that it was gonna be this one instead of my choice. In fact, my choice is completely wrong on the Spiral Drones. But uh, looking at Master Plan completely getting banned, that's uh, effectively stopping multiple searches because. When Master Plan goes to the graveyard, you fetch a monster and the field spell. Field spell fetches another card. Master Plan on the field fetches another card. That's four cards just by Master Plan itself. And if you revive Master Plan again, you get yourself another plus. They're just killing the card straight up and not giving you additional resorts to play with either. So that is a complete uh, crumbling of a lot of these spiral combos. But you still have access to double helix. So potentially you can still play the deck. I don't even think it's that awful. It's just that it's definitely not as good as it is now, probably knocking it down to perhaps tier two, unless you can still use the engine efficiently. And I think it's pretty hard because uh, taking away the Mastermind also takes away the potential to be used by Magician's Soul. Onto the limited stuff, and this is a huge list. They're taking away from Dangerous, Suchinoko, and Jackalope. I don't know why they're doing this, but I guess three axes, Dragon Link is the only deck that really abuses these two cards. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but that just means two cards out of a 60 card deck, which isn't too bad. The other card would be Destrudo, so that's three cards out from uh, that particular deck. ABC Dragon Buster has been limited. I don't know why they did this, probably because Union Carrier is also a thing and it's very easy to actually spam up multiple ABCs to, to enforce an OTK that could potentially banish couple cards off of the field as well. I find that to be very dangerous and I don't think we want to go down that particular path. So. That's hit, uh, TG Hyper Liberian. I didn't really mention it in my balance predi prediction, but it should have been there as well because now we can synchro spam once again in the new master rule. And Trishula is to prevent triple Trish loops and for good reason because hand loops are always going to be hit by Konami. Any sort of hand loop will always be removed because it is not very fun. In fact, when they hit Steam the Cloak, they took away the new guard dragon combo that I was gonna show you guys, which ripped four cards out of your opponent's hand while setting up two negates, which is exactly enough to stop every single play that they have left. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do that anymore. It, it involved the Desert Locust, uh, Darkest Diablos. It also involved Chaos Dragon, Levianir, and uh, and Cyframe Omega. Yeah, four cards with four cards out of your hand. You can't really play, and I get to OTK you the next turn. So apparently, they took that away. And totally awesome. I predicted this one. You guys are like, you're crazy. Hit the Bahamut Shark. Nope, apparently, Paleo players. Konami doesn't like you very much right now, even though they just gave you an ultra reprint of uh, Dynamiscus. Uh, instead, they're just going to be like, Frog, you can go. It's probably because people can spam multiple Bahamut Sharks. That's probably one way of actually spamming it out. You can get two Bahamut Sharks, I'm gonna have two Toads, and that's more than enough negate. And that's uh, pretty problematic. Now the card that I was very surprised that they brought back, of course, no one really saw this coming, which Zodiac Dryden. And oh my God, I have a page full of this stuff because no one really cared about it. And, but 
it came with a caveat. The caveat was Barrage was put to one and none of the other Zodiac cards really came back per se. Uh, there's no Broad Bolt, Broad Bolt's still banned, and uh, your Zodiac rep here is still at one. And because of that limitation, uh, this is what I personally think about the deck though, uh, for Zodiacs. Because you can still go into one card to one card to one card, it's still very powerful. Ty, you can still summon a monster out from the graveyard, and you can use that to potentially keep on uh, link spamming up into something useful. And you can still go into Chucky and giving you additional bodies. And with those additional bodies, you can link them off into something more effective. So effectively, I feel like Zodiax can potentially become a link spam body generating engine with a Dryden that potentially offers a pop. That's my current line of thought for that deck currently. Uh, will that change in the future? Maybe, but 10 keys still at three, so it's very easy to search out uh, Zodiac monsters. Then we have Instant Fusion put to one, predict this one probably because Millennium Eyes Restrict would be a potential threat. Uh, and uh, it seems like they want to make sure the hand traps are still going to be effective. They're not just gonna get an easy out for everything. Imagine every single time you try it, you have a handful of hand traps, but Sure, you can play Nibiru, you can play Gamma, stuff that it doesn't really affect. But at the same time, um, people can also play around those cards as well. And those cards usually have heavier restrictions. But for the more generic hand traps, a lot of them seem to have lost effectiveness because of Call by the Grave and, and the like. And with Instant Fusion, it would have made them even more toned down, more irrelevant. So they're just going to limit Instant Fusion for now. At least that's my thought process on this particular subject, especially when you don't need to commit your extra monster zone for this card in April. Then we have Mind Control going to one, another big board breaker. So your side deck, a lot of people still main decked Mind Control. And I think Mind Control with a synchro heavy format, it is one of the best things uh, to have. Uh, the reason why Mind Control was limited previously during the Synchro format was that you could just Mind Control opponent's cards and then Synchro with it by summoning a single tuner, potentially OTKing your opponent through using a Mind Control. Basically, it's a plus one for you. Uh, malicious Hero Players, your Malicious got hit. Like, I guess I wasn't really paying too much attention to heroes because they weren't exactly doing as much. They were doing more earlier in the format when they were winning events, but after the events, they seem to have toned down because a lot of people kind of figured out how they worked and once you figure out how the deck works, the deck is basically over. Widow Anchor at two. Uh, there's a point that I kind of want to make about Sky Striker, uh, but we'll get into that when we get there. So Widow Anchor at two, so that's a good addition for uh, Sky Striker players. Maybe you guys get to play again. In fact, I feel like you guys will be able to play very similar to an old OCG variant. And then Deep Sea Diva to three. That is a big, huge, huge push for, of course, upcoming product for the Deep Sea archetype. Uh, aside from that, Deep Sea Diva is a one card uh, Christian Hell Clipperfax, so uh, that's that's something for you guys to think about whether or not you can use it. We don't have Fishborg Blasters. There's a lot of cards that we don't have that we can't really abuse with, but hey, Deep Sea Diva is also a very powerful card nonetheless, and it was a very big part of uh, Diva Zombie Synchro. That was, a, that was a very fun deck back in the past. And then we have Spiral Drones. I thought this one was gonna get banned over the Master Plan, but apparently not. They're not even, they're just completely killing Spirals all together and yeah drones is at three so they get to rearrange your deck but it seems like their combo potential is definitely nerfed down to the ground and this is a surprise to me i never thought necroface would ever come back to three but it is so we have necroface in fact I, we're gonna see a lot more necroface based decks and i feel like necroface would likely get semi-limited in the upcoming ban list because of it it is very dangerous to let a deck like this exist because uh, one Gold Sark. I get that Gold Sark is at one, but back in the day, if you guys never played this deck because it was way too expensive in TCG, perhaps one of the most expensive TCG decks, if you even was able, like even if you were able to actually acquire the deck because most of these cards were prize cards and Necrophases were $200 a piece. One activation of uh, Gold Sark would trigger the Necroface. If Necroface hits another Necroface, you would banish your opponent's 10 cards out of their deck, completely crippling out their deck uh, so that any type of combo pieces, especially the one-ofs, they're all just dead. There's no way you can play. And I feel like we can go back in that direction. Back in the, back in the day, you only had three Gold Sarks to kind of achieve that kind of combo. This time around, you have one Gold Sark, but you also have three Allure of Darkness. Can still achieve the same things. And not only that, you can summon a Grand Maju to Iza and still punch your opponent in the face 
and perhaps back it up with a bit of danger. It's uh, still a very threatening thought. So I feel like that's going to be an upcoming deck as well. And Pot of Adverse at three. That's the point that I kind of want to make for Sky Strikers. Sky Strikers, you have your potential right here because in the OCG, when they had their uh, engage limited, uh, they use Kagari's. They basically spammed out Kagari, Shizuku, Hayate, Kaina, and whatever link possible. And then they just put all the extra deck cards back into the deck and then draw two cards. And that's kind of how they cycled out their cards. But you still only have one uh, multi roll, so you still have to be very careful with your resources. But you also have now uh, Sky Striker Ace Zeke as an additional card to play, and you also have Sky Striker Ace Rose. I don't know how that affects it. Will you become relevant again? I would like to see some of the pros try it out. Maybe it's a uh, high potential, potentially there. I don't know. But that's basically the balance. And okay, let's jump into the damage report. Okay, to start things off with the survivors of this balance, Super Poly did not get hit. Miss Valley Thunderbird did not get hit, although it did address Luna Lights abusing it. However, Luna Lights aren't the only deck that are capable of making the infinite negate combo. If you have a rank four spam, you can quite easily go into Force Tricks. And I'm looking at Black Wings being the potential next abuser, and even Rockets potentially abusing uh, this particular combo. In other words, it's not something that you can get and just completely disregard just yet. Guard Dragon LP did not get hit. In other words, three access Dragon Links is still more or less full power. They did lose a little consistency, but it's okay. They can still rip a card out of your hand and potentially uh, evolve the deck even further by going into stuff like Needle Fiber and uh, yeah, can seriously do some damage at that point. But they aren't going to use the Darkest Diablos no more because uh, the Steam the Cloak has been uh, banned off. And then there's also Salamangrates. They didn't get touched at all, so there's still a deck that still exists and they can be really adaptable to most formats. And these are some of the main survivors, of course. Some of them aren't just survivors. Some decks are complete winners, and we'll talk about them as we go. All right, so let's sound the alarm. Luna Lights. Uh, Luna Light is now over because they lost one of their key cards. In fact, the only card that made the deck really functional, Luna Light Tiger. Although Tiger did exist for a very long time, it's just that paired with Yellow Martin, uh, those two could not live together for very long, and well, the deck is now completely dead. In terms of deck losses, they mainly just lost three Luna Light Tigers. However, the deck can't really repair because there's no real replacement to Luna Light Tiger. So in any regards to combo losses, they lost their starting play, time thief combos, opening plays, and the infinite negate combo. That's just all out the door, down the drain, just flush it down the toilet. And in terms of final remarks, there's no real reason why you should use Luna Lights as a combo or a level four body spam deck anymore. It's just not very much possible. You're gonna be consuming resources. It's no longer free. You gotta burn your Luna Light perfume. You gotta use Monster Reborn. You gotta use all the things that, well, basically this deck is 100% of the time, you're gonna brick every time because you can't get a tiger to your hand. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of the earlier declarations of what the deck considered as a brick. So you can go back to your fusion roots if you want to play Luna Lights. Yeah, there's nothing that I can say that I would actually repair this deck. As for Spirals, you are losing out on two Master Plans due to Master Plan getting banned, and you only ran two copies of Master Plan anyway. But aside from that, you're probably pulling out uh, three copies of Magician Soul. There's no target for it anymore unless you're running Apprentice Illusion Magician, which I don't know why you're running that card. You have Master Plan as your main target. But it is nice to get a free summon out from the Magician's Soul. If you want to keep running Magician's Soul, you'll have to shove in copies of Apprentice Illusion Magician or Dark Magician or some sort of level six or higher spell caster to enable it because you still have three copies of Rescue. And if you have Rescue in hand, you don't mind throwing it into the graveyard and that still enables the opportunity to combo. Given that you also gain back two drones and that also opens up the play for machine dupe. It is a machine and you can summon them all out all at once. That could potentially lead to a full combo. That also means you could also run additional tufts. You can replace certain cards uh, just to kind of fix up the deck, but it's honestly not going to be as strong because due to your combo losses, you lost your Magician's Soul Base combo and that is a severe hit. The additional free body plus spiral 
it's no longer going to lead to a four card search thanks to the master plan. So that's a, a pretty major hit. So you lost your ability to search rescues and assault. So you can't just free spam out cards. You're going to be relying on foolish barrel goods a little bit more. So maybe you can amp that up to three if you're only running two copies. But you also gain access to Drone. And Drone is still one of the most annoying cards in the game so far, being able to manipulate your opponent's draws so that they would draw a brick or a dead draw along the way. So that's pretty good. Anyways, final remarks. Major damage to consistency for sure because you're losing out on your ability to draw. If you're gonna be cutting out your Magician's Soul, you're not gonna be able to get your four card search. And what makes this deck extremely powerful is that you are also losing out your ability to search out your field spell, which prevents your stuff from being targeted. So you have to hard draw it, or you're gonna to have to rely on stuff like metaverse, terraforming to kind of dig it out. So it's gonna be a bit more difficult. Next deck to take a bit of hit would be three access Dragon Links. Uh, they lost Destrudo and they also lost one copy of Jackal and one Suchinoko. The Destrudo to me is more or less minor because it's kind of a collateral damage coming from Needle Fiber. But for the Suchinoko and the Jackalope, I find that those hits are quite severe. Even for a 60 card deck, it's still one of the cards that allow you to draw additional cards and it's acting as a free summon along the way. Synergizes with your graveyard if you do somehow ditch out some of the cards that you prefer to have in the graveyard. So it does matter. You can technically replace those cards, say, with additional dragon cards like Crusadia Guard Dragon. Perhaps you have another level 3 spammer you can run. You can probably run another junk forward if you are looking to run another junk forward. But overall, it does impact the consistency a little. Is it going to see a lot of difference? Probably not too much. And for those of you guys who aren't running far from the Malbranch of Burning Abyss, consider running that because it's an out to Winda. And it's also a really good out against Salamangri boards when they only leave with one monster. Uh, by just dumping in a Farfa, you can completely get rid of all the threats and OTK your opponent. So that's something for you to consider. In terms of combo losses and gains, no combo losses whatsoever. In fact, there's still potential for the deck to evolve even further thanks to Dual Overload uh, being released. And uh, there's a lot of opportunity for us to evolve the deck even further. I'm a fan of this deck right now, but I think I might jump ship back to Rockets because I think Rockets has the potential to go for the infinite negate combo. I'm gonna go try it out, but I'm also gonna be trying out Black Wings as well because Black Wings is also one of these winners of uh, this ban list. Uh, final remarks, minor hits, 100% repairable, doesn't affect the deck all too much, so congratulations. Dragon players, keep on rolling, I guess, yeah. And also one of the biggest wins is LP wasn't hit, so yeah, there's that. And damage report for Shadows, nothing. They did not take a single hit whatsoever. Maybe, sure, instant fusion if you ran instant fusion. Uh, otherwise, nothing. Yeah, free reign. I feel sorry for those of you who play three copies of instant fusion, mainly for the Thousand Eyes Restrict or Millennium's Eyes Restrict. Whatever the case may be, uh, Shadows are completely unaffected and uh, they still have three Shadow fusion. They have three super poly and they still have three copies of Construct. So take that as you will. It's going to be a fun ride for anyone playing Shadal. So for the time being, Shadal is probably gonna be one of the best decks ever. In fact, there's a lot of decks that did not take any hits. In fact, rather than just kind of trolling you guys with this giant thing, let's just jump into a full list. Okay, for this top decks remaining, let's look at the top here, which are top tier potential. Rockets, 100%. Uh, Rockets have already been performing very, very well, even without 3-axis Dragon Link. And uh, they also, of course, won the UDS. So Rockets remain unfazed. However, the, one of their biggest weakness will be Super Poly moving forward, as Super Poly remains to be at 3. So there could be multiple copies of um, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, and that is more or less enough to kill someone if you uh, time it out correctly. Shadal Invoked or any form of Shadal Variation, Shadalk, Shadal in variation, they will be very successful nonetheless. Salamangrid didn't really change whatsoever. I think the format is still going to be very much grave centric. Uh, three axis Dragon Link, I don't think they change very much and they're still gonna rip cards out of your hand. And I've, ex I've played the deck against some of the Needle Fiber variant and it doesn't really change all that much because setting up a mass board of negates against your opponent and not being susceptible to super poly when you build the board is still one of the big big uh, counters to uh, a lot of things in the meta, I would say. And on top of that, mind control is down to one, so one of the major cards that would break the board is also out of the picture. But Mystic Mind is still a thing, so you can still use Mystic Mind to kind of cut people out. Um, in terms of anti-meta, Altergeist is still 
very much strong and up there. And I think it's gonna stay up there. I think Subterra is kind of in the same ballpark. I'm not just gonna fill up this graphic with both of them. Anti-meta, Subterra, Alter Geist, they're still among top tier potential. Heroes, another deck that didn't take major hits. They did lose one Malicious. I'm not sure if that actually changes all too much in terms of your combo capacity. Uh, it might short you up one monster and perhaps short you in a future uh, recovery play. But aside from that, you still have everything intact and, uh, and then some. So uh, I believe you're going to be able to live just fine. In fact, you're probably one of the strongest survivors out there because you don't have to maintain your zones anymore, but you're probably still gonna go into Cross Crusader anyway. And then of course, Pendulums, last but not least, top tier potential. They have Selene, they have everything that they really need to continue playing. and. They didn't take a hit on this ban list whatsoever. So congratulations. These are the probably the winners of this ban list. Now let's look at some of the stuff coming forward. Now hidden potential. I'm gonna talk about uh, this one right here. This is one of my favorite decks back in the day, which was Necroface. Necroface, sure, we don't have triple gold Sark just yet, but this is another variation on the Grand Maju. You might not need to rely on, say, the Golden Castle, but this is going to be one of those anti-40 card decks because if you run a deck uh, that can potentially banish 15 cards out of your opponent's main deck, consider their combo pieces completely ripped out. And you can probably cycle that by putting it back into the graveyard and cycling it back out. It is a zombie card. And that means you can potentially revive from the banish pile if you have the correct cards. I just feel like Necroface isn't something for you to underestimate because we have three Allure of Darkness. This card is also dark, it can get banished, and then it can banish additional cards, set up your Grand Maju plays, and perhaps even DD Dynamite. And that's how it actually played back in the day. It was a DD Dynamite burn to death type of deck. And we have ways to search out trap cards now. So I wouldn't completely throw this one out just yet. Keep that in mind. Diva decks, I think Diva decks are high potential now, th now that we have three Divas and potentially it is a one card Needle Fiber. There are potential uh, decks that can just rely on Needle Fiber and just spam out cards. Or you can play the new Deep Sea stuff. I'm not sure how strong that stuff is just yet. Then there's Spirals. Sure, they aren't what they used to be, but I wouldn't completely lock them out just yet. They are still a summon spam deck. As long as they can get to a double helix, it's uh, not completely over for them just yet, especially when we have Foolish Barrel Goods to kind of set them up in the graveyard and they have still a spiral big red to summon stuff out of the graveyard. They just have to max out more on those cards if they want to revive more cards out of the graveyard. And then there is uh, Generators. They're gonna be gaining Lopter and Hoar and that's gonna completely change the dynamic for that deck. And yeah, the two card combos I can set up into uh, three to four disruption and they're very, very big and it's not that easy to break. And uh, Condemn Witch would also set up this card giving this deck a lot of consistency thanks to Lopter being a level four fairy. And Subterra, yeah, Subterra is here. Hidden potential, really strong deck nonetheless. Although kind of susceptible to Lightning Storm once you bait out uh, one copy of uh, uh, their one copy of Negation through their Fiendus. And then there's Grand Maju decks, Golden Castle Grand Maju. They didn't really take a hit, so yeah, they're still around. Black Wings is probably another deck with a hidden potential because they can go into the negate combos. In fact, now that they don't need their zoning anymore, they can go into two directions right now. I'm exploring it personally. I'm looking into synchro spamming, so where you run, only run about five links and then the rest of it's all synchro. And then there is the link spamming, which kind of focuses more on getting the infinite negate combo while setting up an Avermax on the side or perhaps a hidden, a full armor master, something along those lines. Really testing out the combos, but they are still very strong nonetheless they did lose steam the cloak and they were the deck that honestly deserved to play it because it was part of the archetype uh, but you know it's gone so they'll just have to deal with it and of course there is sky striker i wouldn't neglect sky striker completely because we have three pot of avarice ocg played it in a very similar fashion when they only had one engage they can cycle Kagari non-stop. And it seems like with three Kagari, double Widow Anchor, I think that possibility is back. And with Zeke setting up a Link 2 Sky Striker, they can have a Link 2 up while um, basically having their uh, back row completely live and still have a Sky Striker name for Ray to kind of tag back out. And that's where the potential lies for Sky Striker. I think they can still be a viable deck. And yeah, that's kind of my rundown of the top tier potential, hidden potential, 
And uh, this is my damage report for the April 2020 TCG ban list. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you guys want to see more stuff from MCG.TV, hit the subscribe ding notification bell. I believe Nishi will have some sort of market update for you guys in the near future. And yeah, if you guys are wondering where I am, I am currently at my fiance's place. This is kind of my makeshift portable studio, if you would say. And uh, that's all I got. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I gotta go make a steak.